you so much. Um, well, thank you for the wonderful introduction, Connie. Like Connie said, my name is Dr. Ebony Vincent, and I'm extremely excited to speak to each and every one of you um, tonight. Uh, the theme that I will be speaking from fully embodies the fact that we are unstoppable together. Sharing a common goal with like-minded people with similar values makes for the strongest team. Together, individuals combine their strengths and utilize their individual talents in order to place their best foot forward and towards the common goal. We are taught this as children, we learn how to get along with others by learning how to share, to use our words to resolve conflict and to try, try to be consistent in our practice of certain skills in order to master them. As we grow into our respective passions and personalities and eventually find our hobbies and professions, we are continuously shaped and reshaped by those around us. For me, my passion is health and the wellness of people. And my team is a cohort of physicians, nurses, therapists, orderlies, and administrators. Along my journey, I have been on several different teams and to know that sometimes we do lose sight of how teams work. We forget that our common goals unite us and instead we begin to focus on how different we are in going about achieving these goals. What I have learned is that with more achievement, individuals tend to buy into the methods in which brought them that success. And with that, it can become more difficult to accept a new thought and different methods of achievement. Amongst teammates who have all achieved a certain level of success, who may have never previously worked together, the different methods and the different thought processes can create conflict, divisiveness, and an overall bad team environment. The most important thing that I've learned to achieving continued success in different realms, fields, and situations is the power of humility, openness to learning new methods, having emotional intelligence, and being unyielding in accomplishing set goals. With all of these attributes, we will most definitely be unstoppable together. Teamwork was drilled into me from day one as I was the last teammate to join my family of four. Coming in as the youngest child in my family, and the oldest granddaughter to a pretty large family, we have all had our team roles as it pertains to basically our family dynamics, namely taking care of my 92 year old grandmother, who was our matriarch of the family. As a running joke, but really serves as an actual strategy, we have the A team, which is my parents and their siblings and spouses. They play a major role in oversight and scheduling care around my grandmother. Myself, my brother, and all of my first cousins, we consider ourselves the B team. We come through for holes in scheduling, driving or transportation, and also entertainment. The C team is comprised of my second cousins and the younger cohort of first cousins, which their roles change daily depending on growth and maturity. <laughs> but our family and our, the family's team, we all have the same goal. Our family's goal is to continuously be united together, to, take, to stay close and to protect the queen, my 92 year old grandmother. So sports also played a huge role in my childhood. At an early age, I participated in softball, basketball and volleyball and eventually earned a college scholarship to play volleyball. College sports was the first time that I was able to recognize how a group of talented people can have challenges in working together as a team. In development years in club volleyball, you are thrown into this world of intense four hour practices, skills trainings, tournaments and the like. And eventually your skills develop into a position. This is your position on the team. Because your natural ability is to jump high and your arms are really long, you are the middle blocker, as I was told. This was my position. And as such, my skills and training hours were dedicated to the middle blocking position. Certain sets, certain drills of shuffling back and forth, weight training specifically dedicated to leg strength, because this was my role on the team. 
my practice was focused and other skill sets were not so much focused on. And our team was great. We won a lot. Each young woman on the team was dedicated to their craft and their position. They honed in on the skills of their position and their new role on this team. And that every day was achieving more and more success. More than half of my club volleyball teammates went on to get scholar college scholarships. And the ultimate goal that we all set out to do as individuals and as a team was achieved. And then we all went to college. <laughs> and all of that training, becoming the best middle blocker, the hours spent with intense training, in one instance became less valuable. When my college position was changed, I was now a right side hitter, no longer a middle blocker. And with this change of position, I was expected to know how to set and to be in the rotation to return serves. Now, if you've never played volleyball or have no idea what the positions are, just know that this was a skill set that I was not yet trained to do. I had not developed these skills very well at all. I was considered a good volleyball player, but I was unable to show it because I had not perfected the skills in which I was expected to do at a higher level of play. Thankfully, I learned that my other teammates had similar feelings of inadequacy. However, before we came to that realization, each of us had a very thick layer of insecurity pretending to be confidence. When teams are thrown together for only a year before some members move on and, new, and a new team is created, it is important to have the realization of common ground as quickly as possible. When in the club volleyball scene, all through middle school and all through high school, you are with girls your same age. Your team is about the same from ages 13 to 18 years old. There's history. There's history there to build the team skills together year after year, watching each other grow and develop and then growing together and growing stronger. But in college, this is different. You have one year, really you have about three months of preseason to get vulnerable, to get humble, to be open to learning your new role on the team and in order to have a successful season. As an athlete, you learn very quickly how becoming humble and being open to learning is a benefit to achieving a shared goal. My years of playing college volleyball was challenging both physically and mentally, as I developed a strong mentality to have the ability to recognize areas in which I was weak and work on them to make them stronger and to capitalize on my strengths and recognize how my individual skills made our team stronger. Sports is a reflection of life. And I found myself continuing to face similar challenges and, I, and find new ways to be valuable to myself as well as my team in the realm of professional school and ultimately now working as a physician. Medical teams don't play on courts with volleyballs, but just the same, there are many players that help patients on their journeys back to health. Many people often ask how the TLC show My Feet Are Killing Me is filmed. Do you get nervous performing surgeries? How do patients heal with great outcomes? The simple answer is the fact that it's teamwork. To get into specifics, there are numerous working parts, not only to the medicine portion of the patients, but the production involved in showcasing their stories. So let me explain. Every single person that contributes is incredibly important. The medical assistants that are often the first professional to speak to the patients, they set the tone for the doctor patient experience, experience even to the level of scheduling your appointment. They are also the people most available for any questions leading up to and after your surgery. Their ability to be empathetic, listen to patients, and make them feel comfortable is a skill set that is most needed, that must be respected, and that this is something my patients truly appreciate. The orderlies that clean the operating rooms for sterility, the circulating nurses that make sure the patients and surgeons' needs are met at all times, the scrub technician, knowing every single instrument in the trays and being intuitive to what next step of the surgery and being helpful and creative when plans change, which they often do. The anesthesiologist 
that can bring patients into the depths of sleep so that hours and hours of hard work can be completed and the patients don't feel or remember a single moment. The pharmacist who dispense the pain medications after surgery to the surgeons with skillful hands, healing hearts, and many, many post-op visits, we all work together and we all have our roles. We have different skill sets and areas of knowledge that when each position is respected, works like a well-oiled machine. I consider myself incredibly fortunate to work with such the team that I have. Now, if you've not watched the show and are unfamiliar with the field of podiatry, the show depicts patients telling their stories, sometimes very tearfully about their foot pain. Some of the patients have had severe accidents or congenital deformities or bad experiences with surgeries before, or just very rare pathologies that have literally affected their entire lives negatively. Depicting the patient's glorious transformation from crying in the office chair to undergoing a grueling, long and difficult surgery to walking out smiling is an art that only TLC could capture effectively to pull on your heartstrings. The way in which production works to put everything in place for the outcome is something that amazes me as well. But knowing my role is to be the doctor, I play this role to the best of my ability and I leave the production to the best people on the team for that, the production team. But working with production, especially in the beginning stages of the show, was most definitely a learning experience for both doctors and producers. Having a situation where medicine is combined with the art of television is ex an experience I never thought I'd have the honor to do. In the infant stages, the logistics of how long does surgery take and how long does it take the body to fully heal from wounds were huge factors in determining the scheduling. And foot surgery is very complicated. There are 26 bones, 30 joints, and over 100 muscles, tendons, and ligaments in the foot and ankle. Tackling foot surgery requires meticulous work to consider how all of these structures support all of your body. It takes bone on average about six weeks to heal and even still swelling and function remain uphill battles for those who choose to undergo foot surgery. At around three months is when patients begin to feel like healing was within sight. Knowing all of these details plays a significant role in scheduling film dates and follow-up appointments to create a, a full story of the patient's journey. And of course, the drama cannot be excluded when it comes to the surgeries themselves. The higher the stakes, the more intense the feeling of transformation. At times, I am performing surgeries that are lasting five to eight hours long. Production and film crew is there through the entire case, asking pertinent questions and requiring explanation on what they believe the audience would like to know. To maintain focus for that amount of time is a success within itself, but to maintain active focus with the goal of telling a story in mind is amazing. The team around me is extended when filming surgeries from the show and the surgery team and the film team have made a great effort to all work together with the united goal of creating a great, of having a great surgical outcome and to effectively stop, tell a compelling story. What is not shown on the hour long TV series is all of the behind the scenes efforts, frequent visits that happen after the initial surgery in order to make for such a positive outcome. I had a patient Gregory depicted on the show. He had terrible venous stasis wounds on both of his feet. He had been having these wounds open for two whole years. He was a young man in his late forties, thin in stature, presenting in an extreme, extreme amount of pain. His past medical history was such that he got wounds after going on a ski trip. He thought that the ski boots were too tight and he had been in them for too long and that this was the catalyst for all of his problems for the past two years. He had had several surgeries to treat all of his wounds with no progress to healing. My skill set as a physician that I feel defines me is taking the time to listen to my patient's story, also to listen to the pain behind it. 
It is always my goal to meet my patients where they are in their understanding of their own condition, explain the process, and provide treatments that not only are effective, but ones that the patient can comprehend. In this way, I find that I build patient relationship and patient compliance. But Gregory was a very tough case because even after the initial surgery, the foot wounds were very slow to heal. With this dilemma, I added more people to my team to assist. I added a team of representatives that supplied more wound grafts, more wound backs, nutritional supplements, and with multiple office visits, multiple discussions, check-ins, and several treatment modalities, Gregory ultimately is wound-free. He's happy and dancing, literally. With each new set of opportunities and challenges, my team has expanded to include certain players that added value to the shared goal. From my younger years as a volleyball player, sports definitely set the foundation to adapt, include different people with different skill sets to a team that with a shared goal. This is how I approach life as well as my profession and with anything that I do. It is always a transition period, a feeling of newness and apprehension to the unknown with any new goal. Whether you are a team member at a bank, a team member working with computers, on the team creating vaccines, or a team of caterers or an owner of a restaurant. If you are in education, a teacher's aide to a professor, professor with a mindset of inclusion, openness to learning from others, and a little faith, you will find yourself reaching new heights you never thought of. So as we look in the mirror, truly look at yourselves and ask yourself, what is my role on this team? What value does it bring to accomplishing this shared goal? And how does my ability to assist others in becoming and doing the best job they can do? 